this is a pivotal time in the history of physics. There are two major movements underway. The first movement is the ability to create quantum mechanical pressures in the laboratory to explore new states of matter, matter that has never been formed before on Earth, but frankly is quite likely common throughout the universe. The second major development underway is the discovery of more than 4,000 planets, and that's outside of our solar system. These planets, in some sense, are potential platforms for life, and uh, they uh, likely uh, contain matter at the same extreme pressures that we can just now create in the laboratory. Now, understanding the nature and quality and implications of these planets really rests on understanding these deep uh, interior states under the crushing influence of gravity. We are at a stage of technological development where we can probe the conditions of nature directly in the lab. And that is a new capability that enables this from being much more than a theoretical science, but something that we can access directly and control and then apply to the natural world. CMAP, the Center for Matter at Atomic Pressures, is a new NSF Physics Frontier Center. This sits at the confluence of these two main movements in physics. And this is a, a collaboration amongst MIT, uh, University of California Davis, University of California Berkeley, Princeton, University of Buffalo, Livermore Laboratories, and the University of Rochester, which houses uh, the Laboratory for Laser Energetics. We're including um, researchers ranging from astronomers, the condensed matter and plasma physicists, fluid dynamicists, planetary scientists, material scientists, and the satellite, all intermingling. I've been waiting for uh, this uh, type of a collaboration for a long time. The CMAP is jumping in in the ground floor to launch a new field that is at the interface between uh, these experimentalists and the observers and the theorists in, in exoplanets in particular. Here at the LLE, we have these powerful lasers that allow us access to conditions that are hard to achieve on a tabletop. We've already seen a lot of uh, very exotic phenomena. So we've seen things like uh, what are materials that are normally insulators, like hydrogen, will become metallic as you compress it. On the other hand, you have things like alkali metals, like sodium, as you compress it, it becomes transparent you can fundamentally change the, the basic character of materials just by squeezing it down. What starts to happen is the individual atoms start to overlap in a quantum mechanical way, and we don't have good models to understand exactly what happens when that happens, how that changes their chemical properties, how that changes how different materials mix with each other, how that changes how they absorb and release heat, how that changes their electrical conductivity and their thermal conductivity. One of the projects we are discussing is the, the mixture of uh, hydrogen and helium, so which is relevant for uh, gas giants such as Jupiter and Saturn. Out of CMAP, we will actually probe with experimental methods um, how hydrogen and helium behave under these extreme conditions. So that will be very, very important, it has never been done before. Once we figure out the current status of the Jupiter's interior structure, then we can um, make an educated guess about its formation and evolution. We are used to experiencing matter at one atmosphere of pressure. That's, that's our experience at, on Earth. Um, however, what we don't realize, we take for granted, is that at most places the pressure is not one atmosphere. It can go up to um, you know, 1,000 gigapascals. Um, just unimaginable pressures. There's a mysterious type of exoplanet out there that is two to three times the size of Earth that has no solar system counterpart. We call these planets sub-Neptunes, and we don't know what they're made of. We need CMAP to understand these sub-Neptune exoplanets, what they could be made of, how they would evolve, and what their atmospheres might look like today. 
there's so much that we don't know yet that this convergence and intense attention from the center is going to lead to spectacular discoveries. It's the journey of exploration. When you embark on an experimental regime that hasn't been touched before. And so part of the excitement is just exploring new physics. In terms of particle arrangement, One of the uh, uh, big effort that CMAP actually is leading is to try to uh, recruit uh, new team members. So the educational program that we're uh, working on at the moment is outreaching to schools in Rochester and later on at other places in the country where the, the other parts of the center are located. And the idea is to actually mix different generations, uh, mix different backgrounds, mix different experiences to actually make these high school students and undergraduate and graduate students feel welcome in our community to uh, pursue the science. The research together with the education and outreach will inspire a new generation of scientists to explore the universe. I fully expect that with this type of laboratory experiment, we'll be able to unlock the nature of a lot of these astrophysical observations, be able to tell what types of planets would look sort of like our own in terms of, say, the ability to host potential life, but also just creating revolutionary states of matter here on Earth that would change technology forever. Those types of things really uh, excite me for the future.